Telic warm up video take zero. So, our warm up video this month is going to be two videos. So, video number one is I'm going to talk about a project we're currently working on right now, and I'm going to juxtapose two different type of architecture, like the old school industry 3.0 underlying architecture and the industry 4.0 architecture. This is a this project that we're doing is a unique opportunity to contrast the two. Okay. So what we've got is we have an oil and gas client of ours who just purchased a field of 550 wells out in East Texas. Okay, that prod, They're closing on that acquisition this month. We had a very short window to give them a full-blown SCADA system for those 550 wells. Those 550 wells are currently owned by another company based out of Houston, and they are using Signet as their SCADA system. For those of you that don't work in oil and gas, Signet is a, a really big, it's the wonderware of oil and gas SCADA systems, and it but it costs four times as much as wonderware. Basically, oil and gas customers are getting raped by Signet on their pricing because they can because there isn't a whole lot of competition in that market. Okay, so what's happened is the client has purchased these 500 wells. This is the topology that they currently have. They have an office that is within 10 mile radius of all of the wells. That office has a core switch that connects to the ISP and what we have are FreeWave radio towers. So for those of you that don't work with FreeWave, I'm just gonna quickly talk about what FreeWave is. So basically they have a couple of towers on the building that point to another tower and they just relay communications over the FreeWave bands. So there's a master radio here and a master radio here, and they broadcast to one another, okay? So Zach is a big fan of Ubiquiti FreeWave radios. There are lots of different manufacturers of FreeWave. There is Ubiquiti, there's Yamamosa, there, there's a lot. Cambium. Cambium's the big one out here in Texas. So Cambium radios are the most popular, but the architecture is basically, they've got a T1 connection here for their ISP. They've got a core switch. And then they have these radios all have IP addresses. This is one subnet .8.x, this is .9.x. There are 550 wells. Basically, this radio talks to that radio. There's a master radio that has a serial port on it. And that serial port is essentially daisy chained to all of the ABB total flows that are controlling the oil wells in the field. So essentially the way that you talk to these ABB total flows, which is where we're gonna get all of our tubing and casing pressure and all, all of the process data that we care about from these wells is we're gonna use Kepware. And Kepware, we're gonna configure a channel with an ABB total flow device and we're gonna configure a device that is the master radio. And essentially what happens is each of the ABB total flows have a meter, a meter ID. So when I talk to these devices, I create my channel inside of Kepware. So in this case, we created channels for each of the towers. So this is the bright, well, you know, whatever channel. And then I have a device that is for the meter itself the ABB total flow meter out there. They, for those of you that don't know what an EFM is, it's basically a PLC on steroids. It's actually more like DCS actually. It has prepackaged control programs for different applications in the field. So whether plunger lift control, gas lift control, that kind of stuff, electronic flow measurement, EFM does. So the way that we talk to this, each individual well, we have a channel which is the ABB total flow driver. Then we have a device for each well. And in that device, we have an IP address which would get us out to our radio. And then there's a meter ID, so in this case, let's just say it's 4,000-100, and there's also a port. We have to tell it which port on the master radio, uh, in this case, let's say it's 7,000, is going to get us to the serial communications. So when you've got 550 wells, there's a lot of configuration you do to be able to talk to all those wells. Okay, so here's the current architecture for the SCADA system that we're building. We have an oil and gas framework built in ignition. We're bringing this all online for them. The long-term plan is to put in an IIoT infrastructure, but they don't have time for us to put the IIoT infrastructure in before they need to have the SCADA system. So the plan is, what we're currently doing is we are integrating this SCADA system using very traditional integration methods. And then we're going to turn around right after we're done and we're gonna go put in an IoT infrastructure across their entire business, not just this field. And then we'll go back and retroactively apply that infrastructure to this field. So this is a unique opportunity for us to compare how long does it take to integrate one way relative to integrating another way, and what are the gains that we're gonna capture from that. So we already know what they are, okay? So, but we're gonna go over the infrastructure right now. So every, ignore everything in red right now. So we've got our office, out in East Texas, we've got all of our towers. I think uh, we're looking at like six towers, maybe eight towers, 550 wells altogether. And then what we did was we installed the Tossie Box Lock 200 
out at their office. In our data center here in Irving, we have a virtual host up. So this, these are on the same host. We have an Ignition server running. We have the database running. We also have a Canary Labs server running that's doing the historian. On the virtual machine, on the VM itself, in the data center, we have a Tossybox software key running. And so we've got an encrypted VPN tunnel between their network out in East Texas, which is a couple hours from here, and our server located here in the data center. Then on the VM, we have Ignition SCADA running, Ignition 8 with perspective and vision. We also have Kepware with the EFM suite for a, a thousand devices running on there. And then we inside of Ignition, we have our Ignition oil and gas framework running. Our oil and gas framework is essentially a product that we developed that competes with Signet, but it, it's built inside of Ignition. So in fact, a lot of our dashboards look just like Signet dashboards. Uh, it's got libraries for rod pumps and, you know, uh, Lufkin Sam pump off controllers and the whole deal. Okay, so what we've done is we've configured Kepware to talk to all 550 devices. Now, because we are doing, we're using the EFM exporter, so in an ABB total flow, so in the total flow that we've got here, you have process control and then you also have historical data. So inside of an EFM, essentially these are all uh, gas lift wells. So inside of the EFM, the ABB total flow, these are all G3 and G4s, generation three, generation four EFMs. Inside you have process control. In this case, they're using the plunger lift program. So they're able to make adjustments to, hey, how much pressure do we want the well to be under before we open up the valve and allow the fluid to come out and go into the tank. That's, it's pretty simple process control. But there's process control in there and then there's historical data. So all of the alarms, there are alarms on the edge that'll shut that well in. That, but a, sh a shut in well is basically leave the valve closed, don't run anything and let somebody go out and fix it and don't have the well explode okay. basically. Right, it's called shutting in the well. We store alarm data, we store event data. Every time a program is changed, there's an event record stored. We store hourly data. So every minute of the hour, we're storing how much flow, what the pressures were, all that kind of stuff. And then we also have daily totals. So using Kepware's EFM suite, we are able to export all of those records either to a, there's lots of ways, we can send them lots of places. We send them into a SQL database, okay? So then what we can do is go look up any of the meters by meter ID and we can go grab back those records and trend the data inside the SCADA system. That's what we're doing. So one part of this, when we're building out Kepware, is we have to do the historical configuration. So that's all the EFM data. So that's actually in the EFM exporter. So we have to create poll groups and we have to put all 500 or all 550 meters in the EFM exporter. We also have to configure all of the devices and all of the tags for the ABB total flow. So what that means is we have to create channels, devices, and these configurations for literally all 550 wells, okay? So the fundamental difference between having the IIoT infrastructure in place and not having the IIoT infrastructure in place is that we've spent the last three weeks or a month just doing the underlying infrastructure. That's just mapping every single one of the wells into Kepware, just mapping all of the meters into the EFM exporter. Three weeks and something like 600 man hours has been spent just doing 550 wells. In an IAOT infrastructure, that is when I've got my well out here on the edge with my ABB total flow, instead of having to engineer all of those connections, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the ABB total flow and we're gonna put a edge device on it, okay? This is the IIoT edge device and then we're gonna point it to our SCADA system. And inside, in Ignition acting as our MQTT broker, our, all of our tags, all of our connections to the wells are just going to appear. Question, so, Zach. Um, is the edge device gonna be a cellular gateway and bypassing the existing wireless <coughs> network? So the, the beauty of MQTT is that we have a lot of options. The answer to your question is, the way that we've generally done this, the way that we generally put an edge device out in the field, so right now we have a, an implementation down in San Antonio in a water application. That infrastructure is, we use an industrial PC. The typical infrastructure we use for the, for the edge gateway is we use an Advantech Uno, which runs you know four to $500 each, and then we use a PepLink Mini BR1 cellular modem, which costs like 280 bucks, and then we put dual SIMs in there. And so for about $800, we can put an edge gateway out here that then points, that is able to then collect all this information for us and point it up into our namespace. Going in the future as they add wells, as they pop new wells, that's popping a well is putting it into production. Part of the installation of the ABB total flow 
is the edge gateway with that ABB total flow. Configure the node ID in here, point it to the broker, and everything shows up in the namespace, okay? We talk about this all the time. I mean, this is conversation we have all the time about the benefits of IoT and why do we use MQTT as opposed to, you know, the question about why OPC UA. Okay. The answer to the OPC UA question is, is that for my entire career, every single project that we do starts with putting in some type of communication layer and just getting everything connected, which when you have many, many, many nodes in the field, it becomes cost prohibitive, okay? In not just in oil and gas, but also in manufacturing. There are so many pieces of equipment in your manufacturing facility that do not talk to your SCADA system simply because you can't justify the cost of connecting them. but if connecting them was simply a function of pointing the existing device to an infrastructure, then cost would no longer be the issue. And there's data that runs in every single smart device in your plant floor that there, or there's data that lives inside of every smart device in your plant floor that you could benefit from collecting, yeah. okay? It'd be like giving all of your employees Fitbits. Correct. It's like giving all of your employees Fitbits like we, we all wear here. So the plan right now is we're just about done. We're actually going to cut over. Uh, we're actually ready to cut over tomorrow. We're going to be cutting over. We're going to be doing production testing starting Monday under this existing infrastructure, which is right now, if you were to look at Kepware, we have somewhere in the neighborhood of, I think we've got a channel configured for every tower. I think that's the way we architected it. So we created a channel for each tower because we wanted to be able to group all the wells by tower for communication, uh, uh, diagnostics uh, reasons. So we have a channel for every tower and then we have all the wells listed in the device or all the ABB total flows under each tower. And then in the SCADA system, we actually wrote everything kind of very dynamically. So we're able to derive the navigational structure from the channel and device structure inside of Kepware just by running some, some scripts and populating some dropdowns. So this is a, this is a classic infrastructure where we, we did the vast majority of our development here and the vast majority, the vast majority of our engineering was Kepware out to all of the wells, the vast majority. Leveraging IIoT, we don't spend any time doing that at all. I mean, all of that engineering happens when you install the total flow in the field. I mean, it's just like with the client we have in San Antonio, that's all brownfield. So all these gateways got installed after the fact and they installed all of the gateways on their some 200 rigs or whatever it is. They basically do 10 a week or something like, or 10 a day. They go out and install the gateways, 10, 10 each day. Literally they configure the node ID, they point it to our ignition broker and bam, all their tags are in there. And you know, we have a dynamic SCADA system for every single rig they have out in the field. So anyway, this is a, this is a project we're working right now that, a, that is actually a really good example of the difference between the level of effort of doing it the old way and the level of effort doing it the new way. Now, once we go back, and put in the IoT infrastructure. The reason we, we couldn't do the IoT infrastructure to start is because by the time we started talking with the client, they were purchasing the, they were closing on the field in like five weeks. And so we literally had five weeks to do a SCADA system for 550 wells and give them full plunger lift control the whole, the whole nine. So what we did was we went ahead and said, we, can, we already have a framework where all the development's been done. All we've got to do is connect to everything. So we basically spent three or four weeks just getting connected. And so that's it for the warm up. So here's the obligatory YouTube channel comment. Make sure you subscribe to the channel to get updates on this video and this project. Click the little bell to get your notifications, which by the way, I never do. And I subscribe to a million YouTube. There's actually only one YouTube channel that I get notifications on. And that is William F. Buckley's Firing Line channel. Make sure you check out the video here. Out. Peace. Word. Pshh.